it's Don Kaufman here doing the Theo trade. <clears throat> hey, it's Don Kaufman here, July 20th, 2020, doing the Theo trade evening video. <laughs> Absolute monster divergences inside of the market. We're just seconds after the cash close today, but the NASDAQ up a cool 3%. But I got to tell you, before we go any further, today's trading session, it's all about the divergence and it's all about what we term the monsters of tech you know i'm talking about a monster divergence but really what i happen to be referencing here is not just about the nasdaq because it's not about the nasdaq it's all about okay the same story a different day it's about the monsters of tech which is facebook it's apple it's microsoft it's google it's amazon it's dragging the s p's higher and you know i know that a lot of people you know the markets close and they focus on what did the dow do today absolutely nothing what did the russell do today it was down on the trading session the s p's again kind of got dragged along and to the upside kicking and screaming but it's all about again the NASDAQ. And what is just downright scary, you know, I was talking about this a, a week ago and maybe a little bit a week before that. It is the death, people, okay, of any diversification in any way, shape, or form. I mean, we've now got literally, what, five stocks that kind of run the roost inside of the marketplace. If you don't believe that take that it's the death of diversification, look no further, okay, than the advanced decline line. Now, this well, this speaks volumes, and this is pretty much the market in a nutshell today. When you start to look at the advanced decline line, now this is specifically the S&P 100. And I want to simplify it for just a second because there are, again, substantially more decliners than advancers. But none of it matters anymore. None of it's good for anything. When you have, what, a $1.6 trillion company, a company $1.6 trillion, it's, again, it's not about any more advanced decline line. In fact, with that, and I so rarely do this, but if even if you bring up the entire S&P 500, okay, on an advanced decline line basis, how often do you see that? How often do you see almost a 1% move up inside of the S&P 500 with 326 stocks, at the end of the day, trading to the downside? You're not going to see this stuff very often. Now, when I talk about kind of a monster divergence, again, it's a little bit of a play on words because I'm talking expressly about the monsters of tech. But inside of the monsters of tech, I think you do have to actually start to include a little bit of Tesla. Now, the Tesla is not per se included inside of the S&P 500. Not yet, anyway. Oh, their earnings, though, are right around the corner. I'm going to save that one for uh, for another day. But boy, that is going to be a uh, Mr. Toad's wild ride of an earnings announcement. Nevertheless, okay, Tesla is absolutely unequivocally influential to what the NASDAQ is doing, not per se the broader S&P 500. So that's why we still include what? It's Microsoft, it's Apple, it's Facebook, it's Amazon, and it's Google. And this particular day belongs all to Amazon. Now, the reason I want to detail a little bit about Amazon and a handful of other products specifically today is because that's what the market is obviously going to rely on. I mean, Amazon, you still have, what, oh, 10 days until its earnings announcement gets a huge bid under it. None of that to me matters. It really doesn't. You know, oh, look, look at the huge move. It's up some 8%. I'm all about what the anticipation of movement happened to be. So I'm going to apply what's called auto expected moves. And one thing that I've been harping on in this marketplace, okay, and continue to reiterate everything in the marketplace right now is about outliers. This is the expected move for the entire week. Obviously the central line okay, is the start place for the week. We've already cracked the upside of the expected move. Statistically, very improbable to do so, for example, on a, on a Monday afternoon. Nevertheless, we can get some follow through to the upside okay, in Amazon, but this is one you're gonna watch very, very carefully as this week progresses being a massive outlier. That's not your only outlier. You know, of course I could point out, what are some of the other tech stocks that had kind of outlier moves? Check this out, Google closes spot on people to the upside of the expected move, not an outlier at all. If you start taking a look at Apple, shy, okay, shy of the expected move. This is the points that I'm trying to make. Microsoft, 
outstrips its expected move, albeit very, very minimally. And net net, the reason I'm bringing this up is because the NASDAQ itself is literally sitting right now on its weekly expected move. Now, again, this provided some wonderful trade setup. Okay, just what last week we talked about how the NASDAQ exploded. Okay, two consecutive weeks outside of the expected. We were looking for a large contraction. We got it. Quite frankly, that contraction inside of the NASDAQ was short lived. You had two trading sessions before we actually rebound. We did close towards the lower edge of the expected move. Nevertheless, we're right back on the bid today. And one thing that stands, okay, in vast contrast to any other recent trading session. And I want to bring this up because it just failed to appear today. In each, okay, of consecutive eight consecutive trading sessions in the NQ, specifically the NASDAQ futures, the NASDAQ at portions of the day went into, well, what I call the bidless beast. That bidless marketplace is nowhere to be found today. This was just straight algos buying it up all throughout the course of this trading session. Again, the preeminent thing to focus on here happens to be okay, the outsized move inside of the QQQ. And the fact that the Qs, I mean, I couldn't draw that any better. And I didn't draw it. The options market depicted precisely where risk would be. And that's exactly where we've come in on the button, pretty much to the penny, the edge of the expected move. Why that is so incredibly important, if we continue to actually bid higher, we may get some great opportunities for pullbacks later in the week. Again, go okay, with the statistics in here and the highest probable outcome is to close inside of the expected move. It could provide really favorable opportunities as the week kind of progresses. Now, push all of that aside for just a moment. At the same time that we're talking about, you know, outlier type moves, lately we've been doing outlier type trades, gamma iron condors, which are buy side iron condors. We have gamma iron condors on specifically inside of the spiders. Okay, we took a look at the spiders. They're up what, $2.55 today? Gamma irons 32 days out, gamma irons 39 days out, all of them working very, very well. We have gamma irons inside of Lululemon. Lululemon seeing again another kind of outsized move. And we start talking about, you know, some outliers here. Let me bring up the auto expected moves. Here's yet another product that closed on the edge, people, of its expected move. Nevertheless, the gamma iron in here is progressing very, very nicely, okay, on the call side of this thing. Again, we're not too far off, okay, our exit on the profit side already of Lululemon, a trade that's only been on for uh, ultimately a couple of days. Last but not least over here in the gamma irons happens to be specific to GLD. Gold also got a little bit of a bid under it. Now we need, again, a bit more of a move to the upside and gold for the gamma iron to effectively play out. Nevertheless, any wicked sell side activity would also help. Now, you know, I want to actually bring up gold and I want to bring up silver for just a moment before I go any further, okay, in accordance with what we're seeing inside of the bond market and leave you with kind of a, a final thought for today's, uh, you know, evening video. First of all, it's all about outlier type moves, okay? Got to reiterate that time and again. Earnings. Yes, there's some earnings coming up. Yes, Microsoft is going to have an impact, obviously, back on the NASDAQ. My biggest fear, before I start to talk about gold, my biggest fear is that one okay, of our gigantic monsters okay, could miss and could actually cause wild sell-side activity, given the fact that you know a 1.5 or $1.6 trillion market cap. Can you imagine the impact okay, if one of these big outlier events were to happen to the downside in something like a Microsoft or an Apple or an Amazon, okay? The knock on the S&P 500 could be absolutely horrendous given the sheer magnitude of these particular underlyings. And that's why, again, I think that the risk reward is vastly, okay, skewed right now with a tremendous amount of risk to anyone, okay, that sits there long a Microsoft, an Apple, an Amazon, or really, quite frankly, anything in the S&P 500. If you think you're well diversified in the S&P 500, think again. Now on to gold. And I was reiterating this on the weekend update. We've got gold that continued to see a bid under it. We've got silver that's got a bid under it. In fact, silver having an absolutely stellar and breakout day. Granted, I am 
in long positions, specifically in silver, silver closing on the upper edge of the expected move. Now, I kind of asked the question, this is, you know, one of two things. It's either inflation or it's a hedge. I think that the bonds might start answering this in the next couple of days. We are going to watch bonds like a hawk. One critical aspect inside of the bond market is the lack, okay, of movement and directional bias inside of the last two weeks of trade. Be very careful that the bonds feel like they're about to sneak to the upside and possibly break to the upside. In doing so, I think if the bonds break to the upside, it answers the question about what gold and silver are doing. It's not about inflation then, then it's about a hedge. Be very, very careful because again, still many, okay, of the indications that we look at on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of, you know, full on like risk metrics, okay? They're not good things. All right? And when I say that, I mean they're still the professionals are out there. They are hedging and they are hedging in big ways. Maybe maybe they are hedging in silver and gold, okay? But bonds have been just creeping up in the backdrop and have though have remained flat. I believe that a break specifically above like 181 inside of the bonds that's only a hop skip and a jump away i mean these moves here are nothing over the last two weeks but again have been trying to maintain a bit over here but a break above 181 inside of the zb could be dire for the entire marketplace as again the bonds break out to the upside it is absolutely hedge now and forever hold your peace with that again this marketplace it's all about five stocks. If you can pump liquidity into those five stocks, you can pump the market up. Question is, you know, how long does this music continue to go before it ultimately stops? And are you going to be left with a seat? Wild movement inside of the broader markets. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here at Theo Trade. Have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.